I'm enjoying this. I love this. Uh, if I wasn't doing this, I'd be game banging. So when I tell people that debates are necessary, this is a good way to hash out our differences scholastically. You have no idea what it takes for us to do what we do. It costs money. It takes time. You have a personal life, personal things going on, businesses that you have to run. And at midst of that, you have to make sure that you research because you can't have no excuses on game day. I appreciate my brother. I believe also that he too is brilliant. I think he did a very great presentation and he did everything I expected him to do and more. He's actually exceeded my expectations for him to lose. <laughs> uh, none of which he proposed that I would put into my dissertation will be in it. However, it happens. You're dealing with a different mind. I'm not, he should debate a Christian. That's what he should do. He would tear a Christian up. I have no biasness. I'm not into Judaism. I'm not into Christianity. I'm not into Islam. Shit, I'm not even into Egyptology, as they would call it. I extract data that I feel would do us best. And I make sure it's up to current. I make sure the information is up to date so we can use it, because I don't want to get lost in the centrifuge of confusion dealing with outdated information, outdated conceptions and interpretations. So, you are safe when you deal with Brother Polite. Because Brother Polite doesn't make an immediate subscription to any of those religions. So therefore, I don't get offended if I find out I've been lied to. Oftentimes, religious people find out they've been lied to, and rather than step from the lie, they try to make sense of it. And they may take you from a 1,400-year religion and skip 9,000 years and take you back to Egypt. Come back down, skip 5,000 years later. Find you in between. And all of this to make sense out of a lie. We, we, can, we can fish around for corruption all we want. But we have to go to the people who founded the doctrines. Doctrines don't found it. How are you going to critique a doctrine without critiquing the people who made it? Don't that sound spooky? What, Qurans just start falling out the sky? You have to tell me who created the doctrine and critique those specific people. And if you miss who created it, then you are not critiquing the doctrine. You're critiquing your belief on who created it. So that means that everything that's coming out of your mouth is belief. Now, by my brother, this is my last point. My brother likes to hit up on the religious people because of their faith and their belief and their belief. And it's become popular to hit up on people because of their belief. But I guarantee you, we can sit here and really ask some, each other some sound questions about what we think about ancient Egypt and Islam. And what we'll find is most of our conversation is belief. So we have to change the conversation. So that's my job is to give you a methodology to change the conversation and to believe nothing. And it's going to make sense. He's going to find words and different dates and times. And his scholarship is called an anachronism. And anachronism is when you misappropriate events with dates to substantiate your claim. So he may find the word Allah hundreds of years before Islam officially was erected. He might find the word Muslim somewhere in between all of that. He might find a similitude in the way people pray and say that too is Islam. But in scholarship, we recognize it when we see it and we call it an anachronism. And that's when you misappropriate events and things with dates to suit your own purpose because you just won't let go to religion. I love the people. I don't see the people as a religion. I love the people. When people do great things, I don't necessarily have to attribute it to their religion. Great people do great things and we'll find great people in every religion. But every religion isn't great. And that's what we're going to discuss. We had a way of life and Others made religions out of our way of life, thus causing confusion and dissension amongst our community. I say it again. We had a way of life. Religion came after our ways. Spectators seen our ways and made religion out of it. I love the people, and you will find great people, no matter what culture, sect, creed, or denomination you find, great people will always do great things. But it doesn't mean we should accredit those great things to the religion. 
Because if that be the case, there's a number of religions I should join because each religion has pioneers in the evolution of humanity, technologically, spiritually, and socially. So, this is just a precursor for the debate. Please bear in mind, whatever you see today is only going to be magnified when June 22nd comes. Because of my consensus, because of what I'm hit with constantly, when I tell people I'm undergoing the historicity of Islam as it relates to its corpus, it was black. And this is the answer for people that are lost for identity or are insecure about their identity because they still learned about it. The number one thing people do to justify anything is, that, but they were black. And I'm like, brother, that doesn't make Islam good or bad, right or wrong. Just because people are black? What is he talking about? The original Muslims are black. Her mom was black. I said, I'm not even too sure Prophet Muhammad even existed. I'm not even too sure about that. I'm being honest. You can show me somebody you call Muhammad. I'm telling you. When we say Islam, because the question is, the historical origins of Islam and retrospect to its effect on indigenous people world over, I will not have to take the time out to grab and extrapolate ideas through thousands of years to, in an attempt to educate you about something you already have basic knowledge on. It's the wrong lecture. I'm interested to see what he's going to teach because I want to learn what he has to offer. But he going to learn today and he's going to learn that day. We talking about Islam. And if I talk to you about Islam, you know the things that are associated with Islam. And his own thesis for the debate, he says no other religion has affected indigenous people in the same capacity as Islam. He brought the Moorish Science Temple. He brought up the Ansarullah. He brought the Black Panther Party. He brought the Nation of Islam. These are the things that he attributed to having Islamic influence. So I will not pretend with you guys now and show you something other than that which he was talking about when he made reference to Islam. When he made reference to Islam, he talked about the Nation of Islam, the Morris Science Temple, the Ansarullah community, so now I know which Islam you're talking about. But we all gonna play pancake. We all gonna flip flop. And one minute he's gonna be talking about the Islam, we all know what we're talking about. And the next minute, for the sake of looking like he proved a great point, he's gonna talk about the Islam he's creating. I'll be at the same. I'm going to prove my point no matter what he talks about. And I'm also going to be nice enough to give a donation to the Muslims communities all over. And I'm going to pierce through as much as Muslim communities as possible to show them Islam has been created to work against our people. The word is nice, peace. And the people that are making subscriptions to the religion are also good people. But we want to know why was the religion created in the first place? For what purpose and for what cause? Why are we talking about history if it has no application today? I am not a historian. I'm a now historian. Now historians talk about now and what is important that happened yesterday that only has applicable reality today. So if you're going to have a, a, a discussion today about the historical origins of Islam as part one, and then the more important socio-political reality, in my position, black people in America cannot divorce one from the other. Because if you start talking about socio-political reality, we have to ask, how did the people of West Africa lose their socio-political reality and wealth? And who was it that was losing it? Was it the conventional story that Muslims was putting people in chains? It wasn't. I got to change your views. And it's, it's, it's no bias in it. So I thank brothers and sisters for coming out and y'all ready to get it in because Pacquiao showed up late. I don't have late, but I'm glad you're here, bro. So we can get it in. So let's, let's get it in. And it's right there in front of our face. But we all can't get locked up, go to prison, read the whole dictionary front and back like Michael Max. So that's why these debates are great. Big dog, oh prophet, lo, we have made lawful unto thee thy wives unto whom thou hast paid their dowries, and those whom thy right hand possesseth, of those whom Allah hath given thee, as spoils of war. So we know we can take women as spoils of war. 
I just think black minds are a little different. But you have people out there that if we conquer you, one of the benefits is to take your women. And we can enslave them. Why not? God supports this. Make sure when you go to ancient Egypt and you show us that ancient Egypt is the one that created this, then we just should ask ancient Egypt why you have to sit in here. You ain't going to escape the questions. Go 9,000 years back, I'm going to have the same damn question for you. Thank you for opening my eyes on Egypt. Why is it there? And why should we follow it? You're not going to escape. Hope you ain't claustrophobic. Make sure the door is locked back there. <laughs> and the daughters of thine uncle on the father's side, and the daughters of thine aunts on the father's side, and the daughters of thine uncle on the mother's side, and the daughters of thine aunts on the mother's side, who immigrated with thee. And a believing woman, if she give herself unto the prophet, and the prophet desire to ask her in marriage, a privilege for thee only, not for the rest of beliefs, believers, we are aware of that which we enjoined upon them concerning their wives and those whom their right hand possesses, that thou mayst be free from blame, for Allah is ever forgiving, merciful. So you get these spoils of war, you take you a woman, do what you want with her, have the all, you're Muslim and you're free. That was supposed to happen to her. Who am I to judge? When God, when Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has condoned this behavior. So who am I to come and do a lecture and say that any of this is wrong? But you see those women that's been kidnapped in Nigeria, 200 of them? I'm going to get under his skin. He don't like this point every time. I'm just saying this. If the scripture makes accommodations for this behavior, why not? Why not? If your God says you can have your way with women that didn't belong to you because you took them, because you ain't war with them, and slavery is okay, I can just deal with the second part, which is you know, important. You know, How are we going to get some money and resources? Maybe I should press that button real hard today. What y'all think? Go I got 15 ahead. minutes. Go in. All right, okay. All right, so let's press some buttons. Yeah, yeah, let's press some buttons. Let's press some buttons. Let's actually look at the book. Now, did you know that there's no such language as Greek in history? Did you know that? Do you know when the word Greek was applied to that script? And how Europeans invented Greece? Did you, you know how they did that? It's going to be easy to understand. There was no ancient Greece. Y'all know that, right? Oh, wow. Well, these papyruses are written in Coptic. They're written in Arabic. They're written in what's called Demotic script, and they're written in what you call Greek, which is a Phoenician language, Punic. Those are the only languages they're written in. Those are the languages that was used to decipher the said Rosetta Stone. So while Muslims speak in Coptic, Demotic Egyptian, and all these other languages, and putting them on papyruses, which I'll later show you where the Quran is. So this is one of them. This is one. Dated allegedly 22 years after the start of Islam, it was Hijra, and interestingly, there's no mention of Muhammad. They're just saying in the name of Allah. And then later, they start mentioning Muhammad. There's a reason why they did that. So let me read something of this to you. Now, this is important because if you understand the demographic, the Saracens were forcing the Byzantines, who we call the Romans, to pay them tribute. So they're writing this on papyruses, saying, give me my money. That's going to be vitally important to the development of the, the, the system of economy that rolls our people out of poverty in Africa back into wealth again. Worldwide wealth. That was powerful right there, family. Dr. Ali Muhammad. This is going to be one tough debate here. Now bring to the stage, Brother Polite, and the explosives is really about to go off. But for some reason, if you get short of breath, oxygen masks will automatically fall from the ceiling, and I want you to place the oxygen mask over your nose and mouth, all right, so that you can begin to catch your breath. 
Because I'm bringing to the stage, brothers and sisters, who they call the young phenom. Brother Polite. Stand up, family. I want everybody. I get this off King Simon, goddammit. I want everybody to stand up. We gonna work it out. And let's give it up. Come on, man. I ain't, we ain't, I ain't gonna call them until you stand up. Hey, hey. I ain't gonna bring them up until I say you stand up. All right, I see somebody behind you. Stand up and let's give it up. Come on, brother. Right off the board, Mary Sub Stop, Philadelphia, PA. Shots so loud, you would think it was a club spot. African Americans, although we all over the web, we the hood librarians. We ship the prisons too. We reach out and deliver to those that's bitten too. But it's more than a bookstore. You wonder we got it, mixtapes, DVDs, and culture products. Black and Nobel got our hands in a lot of projects. We welcome all to come build the energy. It's positive. And remember, of the team is awake and conscious. Come through and. Experience this place of knowledge They say they'll put it in a book If they wanna hide it from us But we got them books so you can buy it from us Something to read while you on a train or riding a bus Get your read on, food for thought, get your eat on Black and Nobel I buy my books at Black and Nobel